Hello everyone, it's me, Vivi, and welcome to my in-depth analysis of the State of Play trailer of Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time. There's a lot of stuff to go over, so with that being said, let's dive straight into it. The PlayStation trailer starts with a message, stating that PlayStation 4 players will get two timed exclusive skins. One is called the Marspus Erectus, which I believe is a nod to the completely erect meme within the Crash Bandicoot community. The other one is called Serious Upgrade. The skins mentioned are these ones you notice on screen. These were found on the Flickr account of PlayStation. For some reason, these weren't shared over on the PlayStation blog. Now, these skins are timed exclusives until December 31st, 2021, basically for one year for other platforms. Whether or not this means it's headed to PC eventually or the Nintendo Switch, who knows. By the way, the source files over on the official website hint at a Nintendo Switch version. If this means we're gonna get another version on a different platform, I wouldn't be surprised. Heck, the Insane Trilogy, a year later, we got a version on the Switch, PC, and Xbox. Now, I'm just throwing this out there, okay? An Activision representative, let's not forget about this one, stated that they are evaluating additional platforms. This was mentioned back in June. But for Xbox, let's say, you're required to beat level 2 to unlock these skins. The same seems to apply for PlayStation users, according to the press release. Arriving first on PlayStation are two additional sets of skins for Crash and Coco, awarded automatically after players complete the second level of the game and access the dimensional map. Guess I'm not surprised that PlayStation is having this deal again. The Insane Trilogy, remember, was timed exclusive for one year, and then released on, you know, like I just said, on different platforms. Nitro Fueled got the Retro Track for PlayStation, and the Retro Skins as well. Alrighty, let's move on. The trailer starts with Coco and Crash entering through a dimensional rift, or quantum rift if you want to call it that. First thing I have to say, I love how expressive they made these characters look, and I'm starting to understand why they went with these designs. These animations blend so well with these designs, and they have grown on me a lot. Now you'll see more of these expressive bubbly personalities later on in the trailer, and it really reminds us of Looney Tunes, you'll understand later. This portal seems to signify that we will be entering levels this way. Pollyann, the head at Toys for Bob, explained that Crash 4 will have a linear map design called the Dimensional Map. As you progress, the game will naturally get harder. That's their approach when it comes to Crash 4, they don't want these huge spikes of difficulty. Looking back at Crash 1, example Road to Nowhere. Now paying attention to the ground and surroundings, we saw a glimpse of this level in the reveal trailer. Well, I personally believe so. Now judging from Crash's reaction, this could be an early level. Him feeling himself wondering if he's still physically present as a whole, pulling his ears and all that. Look at that happy face right there. Next, this does not appear to be Dino Dash from the press demo. It's a different skybox and just the lighting gives us a different uh, vibe of a level. Instead, this appears to be the first shot of the reveal trailer, or this screenshot right here. I guess this daylight version of Dino Dash, let's call it, is a different dimension. Another level altogether. Two rocks right here in the back, shaped like a heart depending of where the camera is focused. Wumpas are completely magnetized, that's something I've noticed. Perhaps this could be a perk of some sort, where it gives you the ability to attract Wumpas from a long distance. Maybe we could unlock stuff like this by collecting enough Wumpa, let's say. Or, this could just be simply set by default, forever. Spinning on Wumpa, by the way, they no longer get knocked away, looking at this pirate-themed gameplay. Now, in this trailer, there's no Wumpa counter, so I take it it's uh, for, you know, trailer purposes. Uka Uka revealed, in this game, we get to see how Entropy, Cortex, and Uka escape while also corrupting the space-time continuum, you know, causing a huge crack and then causing the dimensions to go haywire. Now comparing the NST model, we notice uh, different colored eyebrows. They're thicker as well, and the nose has been made bigger. You can even see the same exact location they were in warped. What I'm curious about, how did they revert back to their adult forms? Did they grow up and manage to escape? 
Even if they did grow up, I'm surprised they'd even have memory of what brought them here in the first place. Plus, there's the thought of starvation. Even by Crash Bandicoot's logic standards, it still makes you scratch your head. I mean, they would starve, right? I take it the more they annoyed Uka Uka, Uka Uka's magic caused them to revert back to their original form. I could be completely wrong, but that's my guess. Or, Uka Uka managed to figure out a way to revert them back. After all, he was never affected. We get to see Entropy. He has a rounder face instead of a taller and slimmer Jafar looking face from Warped. Now this is not the version we saw in the gallery thumbnail over on the official website. You can't find it anymore, but it was there before. Perhaps this could be a woman version of Entropy from another dimension, I wouldn't be surprised. She might also be a villain, I mean going back to the leaked concept from Toys for Bob, that one on the left appears to be that woman. And notice the pipes in the back, it does seem similar to what Entropy's wearing. Now going back to Entropy's model, I love it. Here Cortex is holding something and knocks Uka Uka out with it. You can notice him passed out on the ground. Looking at how they had that tired expression on their faces in this scene right here, I mean, they're probably just tired of Uka Uka's shenanigans. For example, maybe he's just screaming too much and they're just, you know, tired. We have a slight sequence where Cortex's eyes shift towards Entropy like, hey, wanna do the honors? Well, Cortex does the honors in the end. He knocks out Uka Uka with that wooden stick. Now we wonder whose space station this is. Cortex's last space station blew up in Crash 2 after completing the game 100%. Hmm, perhaps this is Entropy's since we've never actually seen his area of origin when we first meet him in Crash 3. There's something inside of that glass. An armor? There's a wrench hooked part on top, which reminds us of the armor he's currently wearing. Entropy's clock, I've noticed, is locked at 6.53. and Crash 3, it keeps on spinning and spinning. For some reason, Cortex looks so out of it here. Even depressed, hmm. Perhaps he's being told to obey, you know, orders. Cause this is probably Entropy Space Station. And looking at a smirk, I absolutely love it. As if he's planning to backstab Cortex eventually. His pistons in the back have been changed, I've noticed as well, and they no longer move. Did they run out of gas or something while they were stranded for years and years? If that is the case, you know, years and years. Since they cut out ties with Uka Uka, right here, Tropy could be planning to cut out ties with Cortex as well. He's just looking for the perfect opportunity. Next, Aku's left feather is now blue, which is more faithful to the original. In the NST version, it was purplish. His nose has been swapped out completely. He had more of a humanish nose in the NST version. And this scene is another example of how expressive our characters look. The background, I believe, is something we'll see again during this analysis. Their reaction says, okay, there's something risky upcoming. Shall we proceed or not? This level could be what we saw at the start, the whole theme of green. There's so much freedom of mobility in Crash's movements, I've noticed. It appears he has a double jump feature from Crash 3, which was technically a special power-up. Now it appears to be default? What do you think? Do you think this is going to be an unlockable? And simply for trailer purposes, they show us double jump? What do you think? You can perform this jump even when you barely come out of your spin. In other words, you can cancel out your spin. Here, mid-spin, if I slow it down, he repositions himself. And what I've noticed in Crash 4 and what I love about it, there's a bunch of new type of enemies, like these pig bats. I don't recall seeing any pig bats in the series. Here, to reach Aku Aku, it seems you have to first quickly jump off frozen wooden platforms, and then you can backtrack safely. Looking at the monitor in the center, it looks like a face to me. Is it Uka Uka or Cortex? My eyes could probably just be playing tricks on me. The lab assistants are back. Fun fact, these guys are actually robots. I don't know if you had any idea about this, ever, but they were mass produced, which was spotted in a special warp room in 3. Spinning on the shark enemy. You notice how enemies can act as throwable objects. This guy, when he's spun away, he breaks a crate. We've seen part of this level in the first trailer, I believe. Aku also now spins around us as opposed to just floating still next to us. As we zip line through this course, 
we can swing left or right to reach crates. Another familiar area from the trailer. What this part showcases, while well, we have another look at our double jump here. Bouncing on bouncy crates awards you two Wumpas per jump, meaning each bouncy crate, well, you have to jump five times on them. Not like ten times like Crash 1 and 2, looking at the originals at least. We now take a look at a complete revamped Insanity Beach, Crash's home. You wonder why their appliances and furniture are outside. They do have a house. Perhaps this is Crash's trusty old hideout. Who knows? Aku's feathers are now held down with tape. We've been lied to all these years. What is what what, what is going on? Aku wakes up Crash. And just look at that beautiful expressiveness. Stretchy, bubbly personality that fits the world of Crash. There's an adorable idol animation prior to entering our first gameplay, from the looks of it. On the right side, on the fridge, it says crunch. Crunch as in crunch crunch, or crunch as in the character? The character. Who else? I'm sure it's referring to the crunch we know, who originally had his debut in Wrath of Cortex. Either this is a simple easter egg, or it could be a hint at more fan favorites who will be playable in Crash 4. But I wouldn't bet on crunch just yet. Crunch, by the way, was created by Cortex in Wrath of Cortex. If Crunch is introduced, I wonder what his story will be this time. There's also an N logo on the drawer. Hmm. This is perhaps a fridge that survived that crash from the ship at the beginning of Warped. That wooden ticky looks like the wooden elemental mask from Wrath. It's probably just a coincidence, but those horns sticking out? They do remind me of that mask. One of the surfboard's design is that tattoo on Crash's hand from Titans. Here, for example, you have no Wumpa number on the top left. No tally system in this trailer, so it's trailer purposes? From what we've seen, both retro and modern mode have a tally system, where you have to collect a certain number of Wumpa. And once you collect all those Wumpas, you get a gem as a reward. The stone pillars you had lying on the ground, looking at NST, well, now there's wood in the middle. You gotta pay attention to these things, you know? We enter a cave. The architecture really reminds me of Tiger Temple from CTR. I'm probably not the only one who's noticed this. Especially the shortcut room. Notice that drip coming from their mouths. That little attention to detail, I love it. Judging by the openings left and right, this could be part of the dino-themed level. There's some frogs on the left, just chilling there. Here, to defeat these big guys, you gotta double jump to reach their heads and spin. Here, paying close attention, it's very easy to miss. If you spin consecutively within a small time frame, your second spin not only looks faster, but you get a purple color variant to differentiate. Since Beanox is collabing with this project, I can't help but think this reminds us of that post-apocalyptic track from CTR, the Rustland Grand Prix. There's some weird clipping going on on the right side, it looks to be like a dog creature, it disappears like that, poof. Next, design producer Lou Stutter during the trailer. During this clip, he says they took inspiration from cartoons that inspired the original game in the first place, you know, Looney Tunes. You can tell by how bubbly the characters look. This area appears to be where we find Lanny Loli from his sleeping spot. By doing so, we upset, let's call it, a Guardian, which then uh, turns into a chase sequence. Comparing this shot with the trailer we got to first, you definitely notice a difference in lighting. As for which version is the latest one, who knows. Coco Rail Sliding, by the way, it's confirmed that you can play as Coco at any point in time, while also having her play a more prominent role in the narrative of this game. Expect her to appear in a lot of scenes, in which Crash is present. The Gold Wumpa Crate rewards you with 25 Wumpa, by the way. In Retro Mode, these crates are replaced with lives, while still giving you a Golden Wampa. So the thing is, you don't see the Golden Wampa sign on the crate, but, you know, you still get it. This scene. There's a rift in the back. This could be where we get to locate Lanny Lowly. Lanny sticks onto Crash's face, he struggles to get him to unstick, and notice how the dirt bounces back on Crash as he struggles to remove the mask. This does look like the area from the beginning of the trailer, doesn't it? I take it they were trying to figure out how to retrieve Lanny Lowly, you know, to get help. Aku's friend, apparently. On Coco's tablet, you can notice Toys for Bob's logo, a sticker. And another cool attention to detail in this scene, 
The reflection on the water, you can see Coco and Aku. Next, this appears to be the Gas Moxian themed area. Remember the screenshot we got a while back? When the game was first announced, yeah, it does look to be that area. Again, notice how his spin with Aku has some added purple. Wall running is a thing in this game. Can we all appreciate how Crash struggles to grab onto the wall? That animation is just awesome. You can spin while wall running and also jump or push or boost yourself. This will be useful for, let's say, time trials. Look, a golden wampa crate. I've noticed that TNT emits a glow. While using a Lanny Lily when swinging on a rope, not only can you phase through objects, but obstacles as well, like the fire. Coco rail sliding or zip lining in this case. While the theme of the area reminds me of Dingle Canyon from CTR, or some of you might even think of the Wastelands from Mind Over Mutant. I wouldn't be surprised if they took inspiration from multiple games from the series. This part, there's Engine's sign with a megaphone. I believe that's his voice you hear. It's hard to tell with Lou Stutter's voice speaking, but you do hear his voice. I'll play another clip later where you hear his voice better. We do notice the mic jiggling, meaning there's a voice coming out of there. Jumping off the rope, the game gives you a window of opportunity to decide where you want to land. Imagine if that weren't the case. Imagine if you just flew way past that platform, how hard it would be. There's a golden wampa crate right there. I believe we saw a portion of this during an early b-roll gameplay. Plus, engine sign comparing both the versions, the sign wasn't there before. And you can tell how the lighting looks much softer instead of that warmer orange we had during that b-roll. Next. Okay, yes. One of the highlights of the trailer. Skins. Completely cosmetic. And in-game aka no MTX. Lou Stutter reassures us that there will be no MTX. We have a tweet by Toys for Bob, and now we have someone from Toys for Bob saying it vocally in the trailer itself. Biker Crash from Warped appears to be their first choice to basically showcase the skins. Both Crash and Coco get to unlock skins as you further progress through the game. Let me bring up an official statement from the press release, going more into detail. Toys for Bob is revealing unlockable skins for Crash and Coco. That will be unlocked by players that earn gems and complete challenges throughout the game. These all new skins are totally cosmetic giving bandicoots dozens of costumes and wacky outfits to wear across levels, while showing off their achievements, adding another level of zaniness to the insane nature of Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Not only do you have gems to collect, but according to the PlayStation blog, you also have time crystals. There's nothing more regarding time crystals when it comes to like how to collect them or what they look like. We only got those two words, time crystals. I mean, it's not tied to skins, at least not for now, so who knows. Time Trial Clock is back, so I'm expecting to see Time Relics return. This skin right here reminds me of Ratchet and Clank. Well, Ratchet in particular, I'm not gonna lie. The ears, the nose section especially, I mean, it looks like a Lombax to me. Already, I think this is going to be my favorite skin, the glowy disco one. There's an arrow shaped like a C in the back. Cortex, or just an arrow? What do you think? As for this area, it appears to be where we'll soon find a Lanny Lily and get chased by that big ghost thing. Notice how the platforms in the back naturally phase by themselves. So yes, this does look to be an area where Lanny Lily inhabits. Is this backtracking we're looking at or is the level designed this way? Regardless, the level looks so cool. That ghost rat right there, I have to point him out because he's right there glowing. The glowing yellow platform in the back, if I'm not mistaken, Hmm, is that like a bonus round? The question mark usually does emit a big glow going back to this b-roll footage of Snow Way Out. By the way, looking at Coco skins, absolutely marvelous, especially the one that's themed after Engine. It makes you wonder why Coco even has Cortex Minions themed skins. There's even a pilot or captain suit with an N on it. Why give these skins to Coco? Is there some sort of deeper meaning? Is this tied to the narrative? I guess we'll find out with time. Ooh, this we saw a glimpse during the first trailer. This level reminds me of Fireworks Factory from Spyro the Dragon. And heck, Toys for Bob worked on the Reignited Trilogy. Just the colors, the lighting, the overall vibe of this place. I mean, it reminds me of it. There's something glowing at the top. 
Hmm, it's hard to tell what it is exactly. A collectible, a ghostly figure. I mean, it could just be an NPC, background NPC. Looking at the dragons, they do look like uh, ghostly themed. So yeah, that thing we saw at the top, it could just be a ghost, just, you know, lying there. As for this one, I am going to make a guess. This appears to be Gas Moxian themed. The platforms and the arrows seem to indicate that there's exploration on the exterior as well? There's that C-shaped arrow again, okay. The one we saw before, during the skins showcase. So yeah, that level appears to be tied to this one. The ship right there on the right even looks to be like Oxide's ship. Slightly different. The trailer then shows us the quantum masks. We have Ika Ika. He has two phases going on which kind of reflects his abilities, you know, shifting gravity up and down. We have Kubunawa, the time-slowing mask. The red ghosted crates you notice on the left are actually tied to her mechanic. You hit a red exclamation crate and you slow down time to either hop on the crates or break them. Lani Lully, who we eventually rescue, we see here. He is apparently Aku's friend. According to a description which was leaked a, a while back, he's the phase shifter type of mask. Okay, exactly this. I remember Paul Yan saying something about rescuing masks from bosses' clutches. The masks, how, how do those work? So the quantum masks, there's four of them in this game, and over the course of the adventure, they're sprinkled, they're scattered across the universe. You're going to have to rescue them from certain the clutches of certain bosses, both familiar and new. At least with Lanny Loli, we get to rescue him, and then he'll start appearing in levels where we need him. The same might apply to the other masks, going off what Pollyann explained. I have to say, this is one of the most favorite, adorable shots from the trailer. The way they animated Crash here, how he picks up the mask, how he gets all curious and worried, how his pupils dilate completely, his ears going down like that, just like a puppy. Puppy dog eyes. These two look worried, because Lanny Loli is probably wondering, what the heck did you do? Lanny is being guarded by that big ghostly figure, or creature. Notice how the pedestal starts lowering when Crash removed the mask. As it lowers, the creature will surface, that's my guess, and we'll get this scene right here. That detail on Crash's gloves, by the way. I have to mention it. Ah yes, Ika Ika's face is in motion. There it is. This section of the level does seem to match that clip we got before, the pipes, the empty spaces with Ika Ika in the shot. So this level appears to have some 2D side-scrolling as well. Getting these masks doesn't seem to be a hassle considering their long range. We're legit magnets for these masks. On the far left, is that an enemy or a background NPC? Their cap seems to have an N on it. I could be wrong, but hey. I like pointing out things that don't really mean stuff. <laughs> There's a golden wampa crate right there, it's just fun spotting these crates. You shift gravity with the press of a button. This doesn't seem to have a time limit, this is something I thought when we first got the reveal of this game. These masks, their abilities are limited to some space, an area of some kind. As you exit a part of the map that no longer needs a mask, the mask disappears. The same applies to the demo of Dino Dash with Lanny Lully. This area looks, hmm, unfamiliar to us. I don't think this is where we find Kupanawa for the first time. If we are to find her, maybe she appears randomly just like that. But I don't think so. I'm expecting to find all of the masks. The way she rotates and moves her lips, she's saying gibberish. It's been a classic thing since Aku Aku's Rutabaga. Uh -huh. This simply looks to be a level we'll sometime visit later. It does look carnival themed. We do see like a night version of a carnival-esque level in the first trailer. Here we're looking at Snow Way Out, we've seen a lot of this uh, level so far, showing off the mechanic of Kupunawa. Nothing much here in Snow Way Out. If you're ever curious about more details, this takes place in the 11th dimension. This could be like a slight reference to Twin Sanity. Alright, slight animated sequence here with Lanny. Crash, Coco, and Aku. I can't uh, really tell their expressions because we see them from the back, but Lanny does look worried as always. I feel like that's his personality. Always paranoid about everything. Lanny lowly in action. You can phase through objects with the press of a button. This level appears to be a point in the game where it will face Engin. You can hear Engin's voice better right here. Let me play the sequence. Who allows you to phase shift elements in and out of existence, bending the rules of reality and all. To me, it sounds like Corey Burton, the latest voice for Engin from NST. So, 
<laughs> you want to go a few rounds? Rockethead is the name of his concert. Why am I saying concert? Because we actually face him. His boss fight is themed around, you know, music. And get it? Rocket? He has a rocket on his head. Cool pun, ain't it? And as always, there is someone skipping crates. It just hurts my soul. Crash's Angel animation is back. It is animated differently, but I'm glad it's back. And what's weird here, he appears to get hit when jumping on a platform while also shifting it. Face shifting it, I mean. So it seems like you have to wait a couple of seconds before jumping on a platform when using Lanny Loli. Lou Stutter mentions the name of the fourth quantum mask. I'm not exactly sure how to spell it. Maybe the name is spelled correctly out there somewhere, maybe in an article. If I do find the name, I'll try and spell it correctly. But what he said is Okano, the fourth mask, this purple one. As for his purpose, who knows? So far, we got a time shifter, Kupunawa, a gravity shifter, Ika Ika, and a matter shifter, Lani Loli. So this mask, is he supposed to be the bad one? A mask that holds, let's say, people prisoner for breaking the space-time continuum, you know, something completely unexpected. Regardless of its role, what ability will it have? And will it be on our side? Time will tell. Ah, oh, here it is. Yes, we do explore the exterior of that floating structure we saw before. There's that arrow again. So I'm pretty sure we are looking at the same space-themed area from before. And it appears we're looking at a later build. The nitro crates now say nitro fully instead of just having an N, which never bothered me actually. Next, we enter a Cortex themed level. Cortex appearing on that screen right there. Now, who do we have here in this portrait? Does M stand for mother perhaps? And the one on the right, I can't see his face. Is it D for dad? Hmm, if so. I love how they're diving, well, actually, technically making reference to Cortex's past. I'm not saying these portraits are any accurate representation. As a matter of fact, Cortex's family was a well-known family of clowns. According to Jason Rubin, co-creator of Crash Bandicoot during the Naughty Dog days, this interview from last July, he was born a genius into a family of clowns. His parents wanted him to be a clown. He wanted to do bigger things. They forced him to perform. He sucked. The audience laughed, he decided to get revenge on the world. Now according to the Crash Bandicoot Files, basically an art book, going over the series which was published back in 2018, perhaps he did murder his own family. Let me read some portions. Other children were taking accordion lessons and riding ponies while Neo was subjected to the torment of the seltzer bottle and the pie in the face, not to mention the endless banana jokes. This torture abruptly ended when Cortex was five and his entire family was wiped out by a freak explosion of the circus's fireworks supply. Alas, smiling Jimmy's circus was no more, though the memory lingers. To this very day, an image of a clown, a canned laugh track, a seltzer bottle, or a banana will send Neo in a hysterical rage. There's also a part where it mentions depression. During his history, let me bring up the actual sentence. A creature of wild mood swings, Cortex may be insanely gleeful at one moment, then plunge into deep depression the next, though his monomaniacal determination will always get him up and running again. So basically, going back to this scene from the trailer, it does seem like Cortex has periods of depression. So basically, if Cortex comes from a family of clowns, could both his parents be in actual casual clothes? Well, his father seems to be wearing a knight costume. It could be cosplaying. Maybe some sort of activity he took part of. Crash 4 takes place in 1998. Assuming Cortex is in his late 40s, 50s, his father being a knight, it doesn't work with the timeline. Or these could just be paintings of ancestors, but the letters on them make you think otherwise. Maybe those letters stand as initials for their names? What do you think? Looking at the boxes, you can phase through them. Hmm, okay. We have Coco and there's no sign of Lanny Lully, so I take it we're gonna have to backtrack to this area right here. I mean, backtracking through levels is classic when it comes to Crash standards, looking at the originals. That rat looks to be sharing the same exact worried reaction as Coco, which I find super hilarious. Pause it here. We got a fire crate. You have to wait for it to subside. Once you do so, you get to uh, Wumpas. 
We got a bonus level platform right there. Now come to think of it, this reminds me of Fumbling in the Dark for example. The rocks, the carpets and everything. You know, castle themed. Without the whole dark atmosphere. A quantum rift appears. The first thing I think about is this Torin 4 from Ratchet and Clank a Crack in Time. I mean, obviously it's not Torin 4, but you know, it reminds me of it. This level will utilize a lot of Lanny Loli, judging by all the blue platforms in the back. This looks to be the level we saw before with Coco ziplining, doesn't it? With the cars and all. Crash being clumsy, falling on his face. I'm gonna look at him. Look at that expression. Don't you just love it? So. We take a closer look at Ika Ika's movesets, it's very puzzly looking at this area. The platforms start moving, you really gotta position yourself accordingly as to dash your way through that gap. And make it, hopefully. It can be tricky here. You gotta really jump at the right spot as to reach the crate and to land back on the platform. There's a golden Wumpa crate right there. Cortex playable, this isn't new, we saw this during the press demo. Just like Crashing Coco, Cortex also has an idle animation, and speaking of animations, there's something I forgot to showcase before. There's also a death animation for Cortex. Now a lot of people have been saying, okay, if he has devil horns, isn't he supposed to fall to the ground instead? Nonetheless, it looks pretty cool. Cortex uses his blaster to morph enemies into either bouncy or static platforms. The enemies are so confused and basically frustrated, their eyes shift towards Cortex. To move from one platform to another if you're too far apart, Cortex has a dash move using the powerful force of his head. By the way, this is part of Cortex's timeline, they call it. Same level as Crash, but a different section. With his perspective in the picture this time, we continue as Crash the moment we're done with Cortex's portion. However, this time the level gets trickier for Crash. My little theory? Cortex imagines his traps to be a huge hazard for Crash, hence the more difficult version after playing the Cortex section. This is the type of difficulty Cortex imagines Crash going through. But for Crash, aka his perspective, it's a breeze for him to sort of speak if you understand what I mean. You know, Crash's perspective. Since we're talking about Cortex, the demo has Cortex with Aku. I believe it's placeholder. Perhaps Akona might be Cortex's mask. Maybe that's why they didn't want to reveal this fourth mask. Uka was knocked out, remember? That would explain the placeholder. Something is up here. No, I don't think Cortex is on Crash's side, thus explaining Aku being on Cortex's side. No, no. He's legit trying to murder Crash here by trying to blow up that bridge. Next biggest highlight of the trailer, Dingle Dial confirmed playable and showcased. They did say fan favorites would be playable in this game. According to Toys for Bob, Dingle Dial had retired from villainy and pursued his diner business. We can even see an ad on his television. Now as he makes his way out, he retrieves his blower. That doesn't seem to be his flamethrower, which Lou Stutter confirmed he had retired, you know, to start his business. His eyes shift towards him from the television. I don't know if you've noticed this slight detail, but playing close attention, zooming in, you do notice it. I mean, looking at his place, it looks cozy. The dude really outdid himself. He's got a television. He's got a wall AC unit. He has his own bathroom. He has a sink. That's cool. There's Wumpa lying around, as well as uh, purple fruit, which they call a Bumpa fruit. If I'm not mistaken, that's the Bumpa fruit, because it's purple. <laughs> but... You'll see the bump of fruit in more detail later on. As for his design, much better looking than the one we have for the mobile game, at least. I'm not saying I hate it, I actually love it. I'm talking about the model from Crash 4, don't get confused. Notice there's purple dragon wings on top, hanging on the wall. I believe that wing belongs to one of these guys. We get to face. One of his moves, Tail Slap. These enemies are able to break those big boxes. Pause it right here, there's a time trial clock, even with Dingle Dial. You can use your blower to break crates. You can use his blower to even suck TNT. Use it to break whatever's stopping your way. Well, except for iron crates, I take it. You can also hover using your blower. The purple pool looks like a Wumpa juice to me. There's even ads of bats drinking Wumpa juice. This is, I believe, a throwback to Wumpa Whip from Crash Tag Team Racing. You know, a Wumpa drink. We see the exterior of his diner. The place is called Dingo's. Come to think of it, we had Dingo's Diner outside. 
on the side of the track in Dingo Canyon in CTR. They're definitely borrowing ideas from previous games. Now sadly, his diner blows up. The game's camera will eventually shift, and you'll get some reaction from Dingo. Entering the diner, the plates on the left side have Dingo's initial D. As you make your way forward, we don't see it much, uh, the game transitions, I mean, the trailer transitions, but from what we can see, you have to keep an eye out for incoming attacks from that guy over there. You got some iron crates to help us traverse this time. Eventually, we grab what seems to look like TNT, right there, in the far center. I won't be surprised if Tropy or even Cortex are behind the destruction of his diner, or perhaps someone else entirely. A reason for him to come back and work perhaps for the bad guy? The rift opening could be due to, let's say, Entropy. However, the press release seems to implicate otherwise. Crash and Coco will also be joined by new playable characters at key points on their journey to save the multiverse. In addition to already revealed Neocortex, enter fan favorite Dingo Dial, half Dingo, half Crocodile, as a playable character for the first time in the platform adventure games. After Crash Bandicoot warped, Dingo Dial hung up his old flamethrower rocket launcher combo and retired from a life of villainy. But now he's back with unfinished business, falling through space and time into another dimension where his adventure to return home begins. Ultimately, according to press release, Dingo Dial wants to return home. So is he really gonna work for the bad guy? Hmm, doesn't seem very likely, but we'll see. Now, in collaboration with Beanox, which was actually confirmed back in June via a tweet even, Crash 4 introduces us to inverted mode. Pun on, you know, reverse mode. Inverted is basically a mirror mode, that's what I'm trying to say. But not just that. The levels themselves, I mean, all have unique spins to them. This one, the pirate-themed level which we saw before by IGN and a few other guys. Well, this time, you play through it by splashing paint when you spin around. But looking at this version, there's no time trial clock. Imagine spinning paint and also keeping an eye on the clock. It would have been a nightmare. Maybe veterans would give it a try, but to me it, uh would sound very hard. The Wumpa Fruit gets switched with what they call Bumpa Fruit. Here it is. It looks like grape to me. Whether it plays a different role or not, you know, Wumpas are confirmed to play as some sort of currency in the game. All we know about these purple-shaped fruit, you can earn more rewards. That's all we know for now, folks. In the mobile version, well, the mobile game, which is yet to get an official release date, you can see these grape shaped fruit used as weapons. Now this version of the level inverted, well you make your way across by, you know, painting up your pathway, which is gonna be fun. Crates remain as is, the nitro crates in the back they look different, the ends this time they glow. Enemies also appear unaffected. Now the theme of this level reminds us of Dingo's diner, doesn't it? Or Insanity Beach looking at those nets, fences? Perhaps Dingo's version could be called Dingo's Timeline. Since we have Cortex's timeline, we could have Dingo's timeline. Actually, Toys for Bob did confirm that there will be different timelines in the game. So yeah, there it is. This jumping off idea for what we call timelines. And so these timelines are these optional levels in the game where you get to play as these different characters and see how their story intersects with Crash and Coco's story. And what you find out is as you play through the story, you'll unlock these additional timeline levels so that you can go back, play as Neocortex, and see his gameplay oh, cool. leading up to the moment where he blew up the boat. One thing that doesn't make me believe this is Dingo's level, the silhouette on the enemy right there, it doesn't seem to match the enemy's Dingo face. The Wumpa is same color as the ground. I would prefer a brighter color, I mean looking at Aku for example. I want to see the Wumpa fruit, it's really hard to see. Next, this level appears to be the one we saw with Coco in the first trailer, but an underwater version. There's the Aku Aku neon sign, so yeah, this should be the same level as uh, we saw a while back. I take it this level is the Chinese dragon themed level we saw with Coco, instead this time we are playing as Crash. These baddies in the way, I guess we can't hit them, we just gotta dodge them. Right there on the left, we got two flame crates over a crate. It won't be easy because those fire crates, they also shoot upwards, so you gotta be careful. Oh, I forgot to mention that the Bumpa Fruits have the same sound effect as Wumpa. I was imagining a different sound, but I don't know. There's a bonus stage right here. There's a nice side to side comparison in the trailer itself. Toys for Bob calls this uh, version of the level Neon. Well, 
that's not the name, but you know, the style of it is neon. Here's a better shot of the nitro crates we saw before. The ends are indeed illuminated. Ooh, this I guess is another section of the carnival-esque level we saw in the first trailer. That big balloon floating on top in the back? Watch it be Pura, out of all people or animal. I might be completely wrong, at least the tail seems to match Pura's, and the ears as well, they're quite similar. But maybe the facial area is more round, so that's why I might be wrong. The inverted version of this level is like an old tiny movie, Toys for Bob calls it, with sped up gameplay. As you jump on the cubes with faces on them, I feel like their expressions change. Now you know what I've realized? The numbers on TNT on the inverted version of this level, they're bigger. So this to me looks like uh, two builds, and I prefer the bigger numbers. Same goes for their look. The one with the bigger numbers, you can see TNT in them, they're like broken on the corners. That balloon in the back matches the skeleton we saw in the first trailer. Well, the logo. Yeah, so we could be looking at the same exact level. But you know, 2D section. Here's an expanded look of the same downtown themed level. Toys for Bob goes on to explain that you can replay all the levels with mirror mode, in this case inverted mode. <laughs> no specification on when or how you unlock inverted mode. Maybe you have to beat the story first and then return to all the levels. This could also explain the whole 100 plus levels by GameStop, including the different timelines. It all adds up easily. So the trailer ends with Crash holding onto Lanny Lolly as they jump off the cliff. That animation, that right there, speaks Looney Tunes. It's written all over it. <laughs> I love it. So to end off the video, let me just go over a miscellaneous things I've heard, you know, from different interviews, the articles I've read, and all that. This game is being developed on the Unreal Engine 4. The game will have challenging parts, especially for Crash Bandicoot veterans. Looking at inverted mode, I can already tell that some levels will be difficult. You can switch between modern and retro in level if you find it too hard. It's not going to affect your progression. You get additional gems for collecting all Wumpas, this is something I mentioned in the video, I believe, and breaking all crates. If you die less than three times, you get awarded with a gem as well, so yeah. That explains the death counter. Now during the bonus rounds, you can die as many times as you like. The death counter does not apply here. There are no specific Coco levels, you really switch between the two whenever. The different timelines I mentioned before, they're optional. Going back to the press demo, looking at Cortex's timeline, you select it from the menu. So the same might apply for Dingle Dial or other fan favorites, which hopefully will get showcased soon. I really want to see Tana playable. Basically, with these different timelines, you have both good and bad characters. The way they intersect, looking at uh, Crash and Cortex for example, it's a negative outcome. But looking at the one in Dino Dash, how the rocks block the dino's pathway, that's more of a positive outcome, caused by someone. As for the composer, it's done by Walter Mayer. The one who is behind the composition of COD Mobile, there is Warhammer, there is Killzone even. Fun fact, Engine's weapon is called the Womp, Weapon of Mass Percussion. Clever, ain't it? Crash 2 was the biggest influence for this game when it comes to variety. Things to expect, the chase sequences. Basically what this tells us, don't expect a lot of, you know, vehicle sections and all that, something the third game had. At least, I hope that's what they're implying. <laughs> Anywho, we have reached the finale. This is the end of the video. If you stuck through the whole thing, you are awesome. You really are. Thank you so much for your patience. Now look, there's only so many things I can <laughs> pinpoint. I've probably missed a couple of things, so I would like you guys to point out things I probably missed. So with that said, you can share whatever you want, questions, theories, anything, leave it all in the comments section below. And as always, I've been Vivi, thank you so much for the support, and until next time.